Welcome to this episode of Real Networking Live. We're just exci so excited to have Cheryl Powers, master networker in the studio with us today. You're not gonna wanna miss this, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to Real Networking Live. Uh, Cheryl, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to come and spend some time with us in the studio. I'm excited to have you here in the conversation we're going to have. So. Well, what a thrill. The honor's mine. Oh, this is, I haven't seen this before, so <laughs> right. if people haven't seen your studio, they need to get over here. I thank you for that. Um, so those of you who haven't seen the show before, basically what we do on this show is we are modeling a one-to-one -one networking meeting. That's why it's called Real Networking Live. So um, it's going to be one-sided because I'm asking Cheryl questions today, but the idea behind this is when you have a one-to-one -one with someone, especially, um, I, we've known each other for a while, yeah. but um, so it's good practice even yeah. then because you always learn something new if you right. ask the right questions. Uh, but particularly if you um, aren't that familiar with the person that you're having the meeting with, this is a good way to kind of break the ice get to know them a little bit personally, start building that relationship because as a good friend of ours says, right, you do business with those you know, like, and trust. So right. you got to get to know them, you got to get to like them, and then, you know, things happen naturally from that. So, yeah. um, so I know that you, um, you were born in California, right? Right, Ventura? Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Ventura so what, General Hospital. Okay. So what was it like growing up in Ventura? Well, and so <laughs> born in Ventura and raised in Santa Barbara. Oh, so, okay, yeah, gotcha. So, which right. got a little better, so I was yeah. upgraded. Okay. So. <laughs> so I've been to both places, and I happen to agree. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, right. so Ventura being um, just now part of L.A., right? Yeah. So thank goodness that I grew up in yeah. um, Santa Barbara, and okay. um, I thought everybody grew up on the beach. So Right. <laughs> we live near UCSB, which, you know, is cool. just, yeah. yeah. I love that part of California. Just amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. and unfortunately, I grew up hoping just like everybody does right that i could live someplace where there's snow <laughs> <laughs> then you live well, someplace tahoe, where... tahoe is close enough right? <laughs> that's right that's right, exactly right. right so um so what what were you i mean what were your interests like gr growing up i mean was there something in particular like you were really into like in you know like junior high high school something like that that, he, that, that we can talk about yeah it's funny okay. that you say that yeah legal stuff right, <laughs> right. yeah legal stuff it's funny that you say that because I think when we take a look at our career path at this juncture in our life, right? Mm -hmm. And hindsight's always 2020. You mm -hmm. look back behind you and you're like, when when was the inception truly? When were those seeds planted for what I'm doing now mm -hmm. um, back you know, then? And so honestly, I was a big fan of radio back then. So when I was, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, man, I loved, I think it's Get Kissed. It was K-I-S-T mm -hmm. out of L.A. And I would just crank that up on my little transistor radio. Right. And um, I'd mimic the little DJs. I had all my, Dis of course, we're uh, Disneyland freaks because we'd go all the time. That's yeah. just what you did. So I had every Disney album and I'd mimic them. And so that now that I hadn't ever thought about that until you just asked, that probably is what really instilled in me that whole, I don't know, um, performance stage thing. Um, not that I ever really did that part, but sure. just the whole entertainment. Yeah, community, I mean, right? it's, I was it's, really it's all really the same, whether it's radio, <laughs> TV, or, you know, whatever. It's yeah. all it's all entertainment and providing yeah. that entertainment value, you yep. know. So, yep. um, well, that, well, that's cool. So, what, 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 uh, did you have like a little Disney record player yeah. too yeah. that played the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. We had a piano and my mom, she's just a maestro. She yeah. does everything by ear. So I just, I don't know, I just kind of grew up around that, mm -hmm. uh, just that love for music and entertainment and mm -hmm. film and just the whole production thing, yeah, right? Cool. So that was. So what, what was the catalyst that moved you to the DFW area? Because you've been here a while, right? Well. There was a little jog, okay. so we took it before I've we took. A, a, I've had a couple of those too. <laughs> that's so, right. that's <laughs> so we took a right turn and then we took a left turn. Okay. So my dad wanted to go back to Montana at some point. Hmm. So I want to say this was '77. Uh, we lived in Montana for a year, his home state where hmm. he was born, about 50 miles from the Canadian border. My friends and I remember my friends in school in Santa Barbara. They're like, um, "Okay, the teacher's going to map for everybody where Cheryl's going to move." We're in Santa Barbara now. Now, Cheryl, tell us where you're going to move to in Montana. So they drew a little, I know, 
<laughs> they drew a little circle up to the top near the Canadian border, and everybody's like, is that still part of the United States? Like, it, was, it was so foreign to everybody, including right. me. But after a year there, um, my parents split. Oh, okay. and so we had a butcher shop a grocery store and a, a little hotel in Libby, Montana, of mm. all the darn things. And so then we came uh, down here to Texas in 78. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the crux of or the, the kind of the pinnacle of when the Cowboys were. You know, oh, yeah. I, so I was won over with football when I came to Texas. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was the golden years oh. uh, as, as yeah. we look back on it now. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah, they were golden. So. Um, so you decided to follow kind of that passion that was instilled with you by listening to the radio and mimicking the DJs because that's yeah. actually what you yeah. have done professionally, right? Yeah. So yeah. how did that happen? Well, so I, um, oh golly, I was going to college, right? And I was a computer science major. That was my first. Uh, I was pursuing that whole thing. I was writing the database programs for our high school, mm -hmm. uh, Callisburg High School, in case anybody mm -hmm. is a Callisburg alum, that's up near the Red River. <laughs> so a little different body of water. And uh, I loved that. Like it, you eat, sleep, and breathe that stuff. Back then it was just like basic and Fortran, right? Just mm -hmm. like kind of, and I loved that programming component. But two years into that, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't sit in a chair any longer and program. So I decided to go totally the other direction. I was a drama major. So um, then I was like, mm, I, I like the technical and I like the drama. So now I'm going to merge the two. And that's where radio, TV, and communications okay. came in. So, um, and I ended up at Oral Roberts University because they offered okay. me a full scholarship. So that was the oh, cool. <laughs> so If you can get it all paid for, I'm like, I'm in. So Did you know that Jeff McKissick is an ORU? I do, right? indeed. Oh, okay. I yeah. do. All right. That's yeah. kind of how my husband introduced me to Jeff. Oh, I really? Mean, my oh. husband and I were married. It wasn't, right. yeah, it wasn't right. that kind of thing, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. But uh, he said, you need to know Jeff okay. that's in a networking group that I'm a part that's of. That's interesting. I know, it is. The other interesting thing that I didn't realize before is that I had kind of the same past. So I started off as a computer science major, and then it, I've realized it's like, no, 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 yeah. no. Yeah, and so a friend uh, that lived in my dorm was working on his student film project, and I helped him with it, and that's like what turned me on to... And ah, so I switched also. That's yeah. what makes you unique left brain, right brain. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So how long? Uh, what, so you worked for CBS, right? Yeah. So actually, I was the summer of my senior year, took an internship okay. uh, in radio here in the Metroplex. So it was 94 and a half country, 94.5 FM. And based out of Denton, it was KDNT at that time and country. So I hadn't done that. And so this is how I recommend everybody get started, right? Because okay. people probably ask you, how do I get started in all this? And mm -hmm. I say, intern, yep. intern, intern, intern. So I did that as well with a production company <laughs> for like a year and a half. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I just knew I needed internship credits that summer. And so yeah. I said, uh, hey, new radio station that just opened. I'll shine shoes. I'll pour coffee, whatever you need. And they said, you have a good voice. You want to go on the air? And I'm like, sure. Why mm -hmm. not? I'm a kid, right? I'm 20. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it was afternoon drive. And I sold. Um, little ads during the day too. So mm. from two till four, I'd sell little radio packages, advertising packages, and then from four until eleven, it was a seven-hour air wow. shift. I know nothing will teach you the business brutal. like being on a seven-hour air shift. That's every, brutal. Yeah, it is, but you're twenty. Mm. Right. So I think oh, five fifty an hour. Man, every they got their money's worth, <laughs> didn't right. they? <laughs> That's right. So by the end of the summer, they said, "Hey, if you're not going back to school, we'll offer you an opportunity here." And cool. um, so that. It just made more sense to me to do that. Right. Um, but I was so thankful that you know, 30 years later, I was still in radio in Dallas. Mm -hmm. So I mean, how many people do that, right? Right. Yeah. That's that's longevity, especially for that industry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, how and cool I, is that? I know it yeah. is cool. Yeah. So it's you know my and just like any uh, any entertainment, right? It, there's a lot of transferring into different uh, places. So KDNT, then I went to KZPS. They were brand new at the time. Uh, in the late 80s and then KLTY brand new at mm. the time so I loved kind of that startup venture mm. and then by 94 um, KVIL called and said I was offered an opportunity there that was 19 years so wow. as KVIL can started to yeah. morph and buy up radio stations and become right. the CBS yeah. powerhouse group so wow that was, I and know interesting uh, you've seen a lot in, <laughs> yeah. in sound booths, I'm sure. It is, but I mean, so, how beautiful is it? Yeah. It really kind of speaks to networking. 
And you say that you, you kind of grow up around people and you keep those communications, the dialogue going. Yeah. And, um, and then you, you're part of this other family, mm -hmm. right? It's an extended family, mm -hmm. but it's just so beneficial to our career path. Right. Yeah, I mean, I can certainly see how that experience has, has helped you with what you're doing now also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Working and, with Ron Chapman didn't right. hurt at all. <laughs> right. Right. That was, a, that was a, a great opportunity to get, yeah. you know, to have some tutoring by yeah. the best of the best. So Cool. So let's talk, we, we're going to wrap up pretty soon, but we want to talk about kind of what you're doing now. So Empowered Advantage. Yeah. So for people that don't know you or, or know what you do in your business, explain that to us. Yes. So people say, how do you do an Empowered Advantage? Oh, I forgot to tell you, you're supposed to do it in 14 words or less. Okay. Oh, oh no. 14. That's, that's no, right. No, that's no, right. I'm just kidding. That's right. So, I'm just kidding. No, but please explain. So, um, Some people will get that. That's, yeah. that's right. <laughs> so lizard brain, lizard brain. So going from radio TV into providing a non-insurance employee benefit program, there's a bridge that's a whole nother, you know, bottle yeah. of wine or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it was because I was filming a television show about single people owning homes and it was 2008. Mm. So I got stuck with those homes. That's how I began mm. to bridge my way. Uh, I found that entrepreneurs can have the best ideas in the world. Uh, but at no fault of their own can find themselves on the back end of a really difficult situation. Yep. And we need experts. Oh, we need experts in all these different fields. So that's how I started tapping into these membership-based programs. By 2013, I said, hey, I'm going to leave and start brokering membership-based programs mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to entrepreneurs and to employee groups. Um, and they need help, right? They mm -hmm. need help beyond just medical insurance. And mm -hmm. so that's what this whole system of membership-based programs is built around. It's unique, nobody does what we do. Um, but yes, to your point, <laughs> life's weighty. Yeah. So I free employees from mm -hmm. that weighty stuff of life. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. Awesome. We, and we specialize in 1099s because that's, you know, I wanna to speak to people who are like me. Right, yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. That's a specialty. Um, and then um, I introduced you earlier as Master Networker because that's how we met was through networking um, and um, a, a while ago. And um, but also you helped found the Mid Market Professionals Group, which is so successful that now there's another one on the other side of town. So one in Dallas, one in Fort Worth. Yeah. And you're really involved with the Transportation Club of yeah. Dallas of yeah. DFW. Yeah. Is it yeah. right? Trans okay. Yeah. Um, and so we'll, um, so people can go to your website though, right? right? And find information about all of those groups that you're a part of. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we'll put that link up for you so people can go there and find out that information. You're also, uh, getting ready to start a show of your own with our friend Rob Bliss, right? What, what's that about? So like you, networkers need help, right? Mm -hmm. So this is such a brilliant forum that you're creating. Ours is a little different in that it's, um, it's Network Today. That's the name of the show. And it will be weekly, about 25 minutes top to bottom. And it will be little nuggets uh, based around a certain topic. So the first one will be about newbies. The second one will be about networking no-nos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, right. um, so like yours, just providing tools and resources because networking is pivotal. Most people don't know how to do it well. I didn't either, mm -hmm. right? And you can waste a lot of time and money doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Time so. is money, so that's, yeah. That's yeah. exactly right. Um, so um, last question is um, for those who are watching, particularly on LinkedIn, we've been putting our LinkedIn handles up periodically throughout the episode, so I hope people are already connecting with you. Um, but who are people that we can um, refer to you either that you provide solutions for or that are like strategic referral partners for you sure well let's start with the strategic referral partners those tend to be people in a consulting position because they're the ones who are whether it's a fractional awesome fractional COOs fractional CFOs um, even fractional CMOs right they get that whole membership based kind of plug and play as you need pro process and they're tearing apart the inside of a business out right mm. and, and identifying problems so um, that's where we as part of that solution can be there so that's a great strategic partner um, the people that we're really doing business with now again specializing in 1099 agent groups right because they're not offered anything uh, if it's a real estate group those are awesome if it's um, 
even insurance groups, anybody who's a 1099. So that's a, that's a really great opportunity. The two areas of employment groups that are so underserved right now, and that is trucking groups. So we have a special trucking program. We keep truckers Ooh. behind the wheel and out of port. Okay, I just do. Um, I'm re I'm saying it on air, so I'll remind myself to okay. do it. But I have some I have a connection for you that we just met this past week. Awesome, awesome. That owns a trucking business. Awesome, okay, so, and we need yeah. every trucker on the road, so right, we keep okay. them behind the wheel and out of court. Okay. The other um, area of specialty is helping in hospitality, so especially food and beverage. Okay, uh, that's where my husband comes out of thirty years of that yeah. that industry, and they need help, especially the front of the house. I guess we do have to mention Brett. I didn't ask oh, anything right. about Brett, but that's yeah, right. so <laughs> Mr. Powers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So helping those front of the house employees because we need. If the small businesses of America fail, the business of America fails. Yeah. So everything that we can do to help fuel and shore up those employment leaks, right? An employee, uh, a, a, I'm sorry, a restaurant when they're bringing in employees to work, they'll put ten people on the schedule and only four show up. Mm -hmm. Four for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. So we can't fix all those problems, but we can provide incentives to get more people showing up more often. And sure. so that's where my husband really comes in in helping super serve that market. Cool. All right. Well, hopefully as you're watching and listening, uh, you're uh, thinking of some people in your network um, that you can uh, possibly introduce to Cheryl. I'm sure she would appreciate it, but uh, please connect with her as well. Um, you're you're on all of the social media platforms. I know that, but uh, you know, but LinkedIn specifically, yeah. you're very active there. So, yeah. good person to know and to be connected with. F FYI, a lot of opportunity there. So, Cheryl, thank you so much again for stopping by and having a conversation this this morning. And um, it's good to see you. And um, I know that we'll be seeing each other soon because Absolutely. it's like once a week, I think, at this point. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. At different events. So. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. Well, this is just awesome. And yeah. thank you so much for what you're doing for this, the entrepreneurial community. I mean, that's really important. So. Yeah, that's what we're here for. So. That's right. All right. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Real Networking Live. And uh, stay tuned and look for the next time we go live. You never know who we might be talking to in the studio that day. So we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,